Welcome to Vacuum Wars and to our review of the Dyson 360 Viz Nav Robot Vacuum. We bought one and put it to the test over the past few weeks and found that in some ways it was one of the most impressive robot vacuums we've ever tested. But in other ways it could really use some improvement. So links in the description and let's get started. Starting off with the pros, it was extremely powerful. Dyson says it has twice the suction power of any other robot vacuum, and in our tests, its suction power was by far the highest we've ever measured. And indeed, it seemed to have about twice the amount of suction power as the next closest one. Its airflow, which is similar to suction, was also the highest on max power that we've ever tested, and well above the average amount. It should be said that it has three power settings, a low power mode, an auto mode, which automatically adjusts the suction, which we'll talk about later, and a max power mode. Even in its lowest power setting, it was more powerful than many of its competitors. This power showed up with things like the crevice pickup test, where it was also the best score I've ever seen, as it effortlessly picked up debris from all of the crevices. Dyson went with a D-shaped robot vacuum this time, which allows for a wider brush bar than average, and their so-called triple action brush bar is also a pro in and of itself, as it combines a soft roller, which is really rare for robot vacuums and really good for hard floors, with stiff nylon bristles, which are good for carpets, and anti-static carbon fiber filaments. Probably the biggest single pro with the Dyson 360 VizNav, in my opinion, is its pickup ability on hard floors and carpets. It was genuinely amazing with everything from fine to extra large debris on both surface types. Pet hair and human hair pickup was great, and though the brush doesn't have active hair detangling, it did very well with resisting longer hair in general. Most of these pickup tests were done on its lowest power setting, though we did do a few on max power as well and found that it wasn't much of a difference from its low power setting, at least on hard floors. With the carpet deep clean test, where we see how good it is at picking up heavy embedded debris like sand in carpets, it was also above average, but I admit it wasn't as much above average as I was hoping it would be given its raw power. Another pro is its internal dust sensor. This is something that Dyson has been incorporating into their higher-end cordless vacuums, but is a relatively rare feature in the robot vacuum world. Basically, when it detects particularly dirty areas, it will boost the suction power, and a cool related feature is that in the app, it shows a kind of heat map which highlights the places in which it detected more dirt and increased its power as a result. It has one of the best HEPA filtration systems I've seen in terms of hardware. The HEPA filter itself can be washed and reused for the life of the vacuum. It has a larger than average dust bin, as well as a very unique and hygienic way to empty its dust bin, a little like Dyson's cordless and upright vacuums. Because of its large front mounted brush, there isn't much room for a traditional spinning side brush to clean edges and corners. So Dyson has added a unique extending side duct, which automatically redirects suction to clean edges instead. It may not be any better than a side brush, but it seems to be at least as good as a side brush. It's got an LED screen on the top with a push button action with lots of details and options for the robot's functionality. Moving on to the negative stuff. Though the Dyson 360 VizNav is a great robot vacuum for vacuuming hard floors and carpets, it does not have many of the modern extras that have become more or less standard with other robot vacuums in this price range. For example, it does not have mopping capability. It does not have an auto-empty bin, let alone an auto-mopping station. And it doesn't have front-mounted obstacle avoidance sensors for avoiding low or light objects. Those three emissions make it hard for me to justify the current cost of the Dyson 360 VizNav, but they're not the only cons I found. The Dyson 360 VizNav uses a top-mounted V-SLAM or camera-based system for navigation that has LED lights for navigating in dark rooms. Pretty much the same design as their old 360i robot vacuum, which received some criticism for its lackluster navigation. And though I like to give V-SLAM robots the benefit of the doubt, I do think that LiDAR, or laser-based navigation, has shown itself to be a better system for navigation and mapping in recent years. Its initial mapping run 
took much longer than average, even for VSLAM robots, and its resulting map was not very good and kind of confusing. It clearly mapped it wrong initially, since all the subsequent runs were not in line with that initial map, and it didn't automatically update the map over time. Its algorithm and coverage were okay, but definitely not great. It was also a little hit or miss. For example, in one run, it did fairly well around the dining room table, but in another run, it seemed to skip that area altogether. Another negative thing for me was its battery life. Dyson's official battery life number is 65 minutes on low power, which is the lowest number I've seen listed by a manufacturer. In our battery tests, we found that as long as it was on its lowest power setting, its battery efficiency was good, even a little above average. And remember, the suction power on low power was higher than the average robot on max power. So as long as it was on low power mode, it was a decent performer. However, when its max power mode kicks in, whether that's because it's in auto mode and it senses dirt, or it's just in max power mode, it will quickly drain the battery, and it's one of the worst battery efficiency scores on record. Basically, if you plan on using its max power, you're going to pay a high price in terms of battery life. It does have recharge and resume, so it will go back to the dock and recharge and do that as many times as needed to clean the entire map, and it does have a relatively fast recharge time, but still. The app was not as feature-rich as other flagship robot vacuums. It did have no-go zones and some good scheduling and room options, but it was underwhelming. I have to give Dyson some credit, though, as they always think out of the box and don't march to anyone else's drumbeat, and this robot does represent some of the best innovations out there in terms of actual vacuuming. But the lack of a mop, auto-empty bin, obstacle avoidance, and the navigation system and battery that could use improvement make it really hard to to explain what the value proposition is, at least at this price point. All of the links in our description section are updated regularly to reflect our current favorite vacuums in multiple categories. If you don't know where to start, check out our latest vacuum buyer's guide video linked here. You'll also find links to the vacuumwars.com website in the description where we post all the latest vacuum news as well as much more detailed top five lists in multiple categories.